This video has been brought to you by Learn Flutter Code, the learning platforms to learn Flutter and upgrade your skills as a Flutter developer. At the end of the video, you'll be able to refactor this project to catch all the null cases using the null safety feature. So in order for you to refactor your project using the null safety feature, there is three steps that you need to do. So in order for us to refactor the project, there are three steps. So the first one is we need to set up our Flutter project to be able to use the null safety feature by changing the versions of Flutter and Dart and at the same time adding in the null safety feature configurations. So the second one is we need to add the nullable types inside our code because we are going to refactor it. And lastly, we need to create simple tests to see whether our nullable types or nullable safety feature is working in our code. So let's get started. Currently, the Dart team has updated the null safety feature into Technical Preview 2. What happened to Technical Preview 1? We will never know. We will never know. However, you can test your null safety feature inside your IDE, whether it's VS Code, Android Studio, or even Terminal. So let's get started by creating a default Flutter project. So first, what we need to do is we are going to create a new Flutter project and we're going to name it Null Safety. All right, so once you're done, let's... So once you have created your default app project, what you're going to do is Let's head to terminal and make sure that if you were to type in Flutter channel, it will be Flutter dev channel because that's where the null safety feature is being developed or has been released. If you are not inside the Flutter dev channel, what you can do is you can type in Flutter channel and then change to the dev channel by typing dev and this will change your current channel into the Flutter channel dev or developer for short. So once this is done, so the next thing is you can type in Flutter upgrade so that you can be at the latest build of this channel. So inside the Medium article talking about the technical preview or the null safety feature, there is actually a Flutter null safety sample app inside the Flutter sample project. But we are not going to download everything. We are just going to copy the code base of one of their project. So we will go to the Null Unsafe app. This is where you're going to have a default project. Click on library and then click on main.dart. And this is where the code base is needed for this tutorial. So let's click on raw. This basically gives us the raw code base that is in plain text. So we can copy the whole text by pressing Command A for Mac or Control A for others and then copy this. Let's go to our IDE. So inside our main.dart file, we can select all of the code and then we can paste it as such. So once we are done, the next thing is we are going to configure our version of Flutter and Dart. So let's save this first and let's go to pubspec.yaml file. So inside our pubspec.yaml file, what we are going to do is for the SDK version, we are going to put this SDK version of not this current version, but 2.1.0-234.0 and then make sure it is lesser than 2.12.0. So we're going to use the current Flutter version that is inside our dev channel, which is 1.24.0. 3.0.pre. So we're going to type in the word Flutter, then give the specific version of Flutter that we're going to use. And now let's save this. So this is what we need to do if we want to use the current technical preview of the now safety feature. The next thing is that we will need to go to our file explorer and we are going to create this file inside our folder which is called analysis underscore options dot yaml file. So this file allows us to use different configurations for our analysis options or basically our sound system in Dart. So the first thing is that we need to address the analyzer and inside the analyzer, we are going to use the property experiments, which is in the case of 
the non-nullable feature. Once you have saved the analysis options.yml file, it will look something like this inside your main.dart file. So the null errors will pop up. If it doesn't pop up, what you can do is you can close the Visual Studio code and open Visual Studio code again. Before we refactor the code, this is actually a very simple weather app that shows the different temperatures over here. So let's scroll all the way down. And now the first thing that it shouts an error is this. So we have a configuration class. And the thing about this configuration class is that it has a get app name method. So for this get app name method, it has a simple if else statement. So this is just an emulation of whether we can get the request. And if this is successful, it returns something else it will return nothing or return a null. So the first thing that we need to do is to make this return type over here, which is a string, to be a nullable type. So how are we going to make this return type into a nullable type? So for the null safety feature, we can just put in a question mark. So this means that this string over here if we were to hover over the get app name, it will have this string question mark. This means that this return type is also a nullable type. So either it will return a string or it will return a null. So let's scroll all the way up. And you could see that inside our app bar, there is a text widget with this localized app name. So this localized app name variable is from the config class that we have seen earlier from the get app name method. So the thing is, once you have a method that returns you a nullable type, it will shout an error if you were to use this variable, which is also a nullable type as such. So the error says the argument type string nullable or question mark can't be assigned to the parameter type string. So what does it mean? So if we were to hover over the text widget, you could see that inside the text widget, it requires a string that is named data. But this string over here is not a nullable type. If you were to see the other parameters, there is a question mark, which is a nullable type. But for text, it does not need a nullable type. So how are we going to resolve this error? Well, there is only one way that we can do it. We can make use of the null catch, which is a double question mark. So this localized app name, we are expecting two values, a string or a null. So if it's a null, then we are going to catch it and return a value. So the value that we are returning is pretty simple. It's going to be the string and then we are going to type in weather. All right, so let's save this. Great. So the next thing is, if we were to scroll all the way down, we have solved this. Now we are going to go to the weather service. So inside this weather service, you have this method called get temperatures, and it returns you a list where it has the elements as double types. So this is also like a simulation of a network call. It is also a if else statement with another if else statement under the else part of the if else statement. Don't worry if I say a lot of if else. So there are a couple of return value types. So the first return type is a list of double. So this is like a success where we will have all of the values not null. But in life, nothing is perfect just like my f we will probably have to catch if it's not successful. So inside the else statement or the else block, we have another if else statement. So if we are able to get the temperatures, then we will probably return a null. So how are we going to make this return type a nullable type? Well, you can pause this video and try it out yourself. All right, so we're going to probably use the question mark. But where do we put this question mark in this return type? So do we put the question mark over here? Let's see. No, we don't put the question mark over there because it gives us another error. 
So instead of putting the question mark over here, we're going to put a question mark right after our element type, which is over here. And this means that other than returning a list of double, it will also return a null value. Now, the last thing is that there is a use case where one of its element is a null. So how are we going to resolve this? That means the element of this list is also nullable. So where are we going to put the question mark then? If you were to put it inside the return type, just beside the word double, you could see that there is no more error because we are also expecting a list, but one of its values or all of its values are null. So once we have figured which type of return types are nullable, then we need to refactor our app. So inside our app over here, in a column, we have a text that says temperature next three days, which is equal to the temperatures that we have. So there is two errors that we are looking at. So let's open up the problems tab. And the first one is that those values is null. So it must be null checked before it can be dereferenced. What we can do is we can put a if statement. All right. So first of all, let's put a if statement. And what does this if statement going to catch? Well, it's going to catch whether these temperatures is not equal to null. Because if it's not null, then we will return this bunch of widgets. Let's put in if temperatures is not equal to null, then we are going to return this bunch of widgets. So how are we going to return two widgets inside a list type or we call it a iterable type of data? So what we can do is we can cover these two widgets in a list itself. However, if you want this element to be used inside another element, we're going to use this thing called the spread operator. So this spread operator allows us to have these elements to be used inside this outer list. So if we were to save this, so we have caught the null case if temperatures is null. The next thing is that we have this T. So what is this T referring to? So this T is referring to the single element of the temperatures that is looping inside this for in loop. So how are we going to handle this error? There is this thing called promotion. No, not your promotion for your current job, but the promotion of the nullable error. So as you can see from this error message, the expression whose value can be null must be null checked before it can be dereferenced. So we're going to have to null check it for a single element. What we can do is we can put in a question mark. So what this question mark does is that because it's a promotion, then it will not actually run these two methods because it is null. However, if it's not null, then it will run the methods that it has been chained. So now we know that this T will return a null value. And then you could see that the error over here changes into the argument type string nullable, can't be assigned to the parameter type string. Then what we can do is we can put a null catch. So we are going to put a string and we're going to say that no forecast is found. All right, so we're going to type in no forecast. We have caught that the temperatures is not equal to null. However, what if the temperatures is equal to null? Well, we need to put a text widget to make sure that the user knows that there is an error. So what we can do is we can put a simple else and we are going to return a text widget. And inside this text widget, we're going to type in the error message saying that the temperature field getting forecast. And then you can put in a set phase as well. And we have successfully caught the different null cases brought to you by the null safety feature by the Dart team. So now we are done refactoring our app. The next step is to test our code. And we are only going to do a simple unit test. So inside your test widget underscore test dot dart, you would see this kind of code. 
but we are not going to test a lot of this we are going to do a very very simple test so let's just remove until we can only see this line of code so we are not going to verify that our counter starts at zero but we're going to verify that we have a forecast or a managed failure and we're not going to name our test as counter increment smoke test but simply app smoke test this is a really bad name but this is just for simplicity sake the next thing is that we are not going to use this method but we're going to use this method to find a text that is containing this word if you were to go to main.dart file we want to make sure that this word always appear so whether if it's a null or not null which word do you think will always appear if you say the word temperature you are right so let's copy the word temperature let's go back to widget.test and let's paste it over here so we will probably find a text containing temperature whether it is null or not null and we will find it inside one of the widget so let's save this and currently if you were to click on this run it will actually show the error because we need to enable this experiment non-nullable so we can just pause this and we're going to run our test inside the terminal so earlier inside our debug console you could see that it requires this enable experiment non-nullable flag so what we can do is we can make use of the flutter command line interface by typing flutter test and then we can just go to the debug console and then we're going to copy this flag so copy this go back to our terminal and then paste it as such so the next thing is that we are going to type in where our test is we're going to type in the file path over here so we're going to type in test slash widget underscore test dot dart and now once it's done we can close this and let's press enter so let's wait for a while all right so now this is something that a lot of us would love to see every time you run test, which is all tests pass. This is the best statement you can ever see before you end your work. If not, then you probably will be very stressed. So that's about it. We have so that's about it. We have done the three things in order for us to use the now safety feature in the technical preview stage. So the first one is that we are able to use the current version for the now safety feature which is 1.24 for the flutter and then for the dart it is 2.10 and above and below 2.12 i think and then the next thing is that we are able to refactor the weather app from the null use cases that we kind of expect inside our development into all of the null cases being caught using the null safety sound system or the warning system or the analysis system whichever sounds cooler to you and lastly we created a simple unit test in order for us to check whether the word temperature is found whether the use case is null or non-null and we are able to run our test using the enable experiment non-nullable flag using the flutter command line so if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want more of this kind of video subscribe down below and comment down literally about the null safety whether you think it's pretty good because uh, personally i think this is a very very good feature that we have been waiting for a very long time so that's about it stay safe and all the best bye bye